There's the new bike. Nice sunny day. Nice red frame. Soft bags on it for now. Center stand is a little hard to get it up on. Weird rear fender. Strange. Can't ever decide. Plasticky stuff. Uh, I think the chrome exhaust is probably about all the chrome on it. Nice funky spoke wheels, or so they can be uh, tubeless. Huge rear pegs, particularly compared to the rider pegs. That just seems odd to me, but okay. <clears throat> Can't figure out for the life of me what this hose is, or uh, what that mark is on it. it. Doesn't seem to be a problem. I know people put a lot of protectors over these things, and I can see why. Getting on and off the bike, there's a lot of uh, stuff to hit if you're not careful. A spark plug under there and a spark plug under there, but I haven't taken that off and kind of checked it out yet. Little bitty skid plate or sump plate or whatever you want to call it. Oh, and by the way, most of my bikes don't have the little electronic cutout switch, so that threw me for a loop a couple times. And brake line. You might think, brake line? What? It goes back to a unit back here. I don't know if you can even remotely see that. Try not to move the thing around too fast. It's hard to do this with phones. Uh, it's got all the ABS brake stuff on it. I really like the white springs. I don't know why, but they look good, particularly the front one. There's also not a canister here, a charcoal canister, I think a lot of people refer to them as, for North American emissions. So I don't know if this year they took them out or what. It does have the same hose that normally would feed it, so maybe they rearranged it. A little BMW, whoop, up there, electrical socket, which just, as far as I'm concerned, takes away space from the under the seat storage, which isn't as much as I would like it to be. The base of the front A-arm swing arm thing. Got a shock mounts. These are sort of hollow tubes as opposed to forks. And it's got a little motor control assembly up here. It's got uh, electronically adjustable suspension. brake line going into here and this support member and then feeding to the individual calipers up front seems kind of odd but I guess it works certainly keeps them somewhat streamlined big front of the engine just hanging out there a little odd I'll have to get um, some crash bars or cylinder head covers because I'm Definitely afraid of the coming down on that. I've been extra cautious. This one's a little higher than on the other side. Doesn't have that hose. I have a little dent in there. I'm assuming that's not supposed to be there. That I don't like. Um, what else? So. Oh. Cylinder head position on this side versus cylinder head position on the other side. They're offset, which makes sense as soon as you think about it, but I didn't expect it, so it was odd. Because it just never occurred to me. And the weird uh, paralever suspension, gasket, rear unit, which has all in it. I'm assuming this does not. Right off the final drive here. And then uh, that's the lower swing arm pivot point, upper arm pivot point. She just articulates that, so it's like a you know, double wishbone-y, but drug. Well, 
And that's it. It's got a really high and kind of peaked fuel tank area. <clears throat> the seat is actually incredibly good. I've heard people complain about them. But it might be one of those compared to what I'm coming from kind of deals. But uh, at any rate, can't hardly see through this to see where I'm looking. Hey, there it is. The switch gear is really high quality compared to what I'm used to. But blinker here, blinker there, cancel lifts up there, horns up there. There's just a lot of little buttons and whatnot. Here's what you'd normally think of as a rocker kill switch. It kills that way. But they were saying not to do that. Turn it off at the key in the center. Um, it's my temporary GPS till they ship in my free one they gave me. They were saying turn it off at the center. That throws codes or something like that. But it's a emergency kill switch. The windscreen, I had it in the up position. Well, it worked beautifully, but I'm too tall, and that just ran all the wind right into my helmet. And as a consequence, um, I realized how loud my helmet was. However, my ears were not bleeding from the exhaust, which the last bike did, so there's a bonus there. Threw me off that this, I guess, is the throttle assembly here, and it seems to be a one-wire throttle. Which I hadn't seen that. Um, what else? Little oddities. What is this plastic thing for? They seem to be on the pictures of all the new bikes. People that own the bikes seem to take them off. I can only assume it's there as a abrasion resistance for the throttle cable. I don't have any other reason to know why it's there. So, the ubiquitous little key. Oh, it's got an alarm on it, too. Uh, it automatically turns on, and I, I think I can change the settings on it back and forth. Also, notice this. Way down here. It's all this in little Mr. Manual. Push it down, it changes the headlight angle for when you got passengers and luggage. Push it back up, if you can reach it again, changes it back up. Convenient. Whatever. That was the alarm turning off. All kinds of little cool things in there. And uh, the brakes have not failed. Apparently that's part of its startup procedure. So... Nice and quiet. Uh, really not too bad, actually. Start up and go. No warm up period. Yay. Doesn't take much. And it goes really quite good. But there you go. My new toy. I'm happy with it. Alright.